You want to see what an upholstery shop looks like? I'm going to take you in those doors and show you what mine looks like. Now keep in mind, not all upholstery shops are the same. Some do furniture, some do draperies, some do kind of different things. Mine is strictly for reupholstering and building furniture that you sit on for the most part. You sometimes sleep on it too. Follow me. All right, there's a general view of the whole thing. I'm getting ready to take you station by station to show you what goes on in this shop. Coming in the door, the bathroom. And I think we all know what business goes on in there. Next to here, obviously, is the kitchen. Over here, we start getting into my supply area. And what you can see is I got a lot of Dacron, got some plastic edrol up here. There's a boat back there. We don't know why the owner built that thing, but it just sits there and sits there. It actually hangs there. Now here's all the different types of foams I use in this shop. What we have, these are your seat foams. And I've got them in four and five inch. And then occasionally you'll see a soft one here. That's for backs. Rarely use it, but we have it when we need it. Here I have a variety of two inch and three inch, uh, anywhere from soft to firm for whatever application I need them for. These are usually gonna be on your tight seats. Uh, this is a soft, which will usually be on a back. And then there's gonna be mediums that also kind of go on backs, you know, it, behind the softs. So usually there's four inches of back where you got a firm and a and a soft uh, on top of that. Makes for a really good back. We use a, you know, basically two different kinds of one inch. We got a firm, which is used for seating. And then we've got uh, a poly that we use for, you know, kind of on backs and, and uh, where we need just soft fill in type areas. And of course here we've got half inch uh, for about the same purpose. Right here is kind of a workstation for an upholsterman or a trimmer or about anybody. We're coming in to this work zone. This work zone is a special work zone. This is where the world renowned upholsterer works. He is known by many. He is revered by all. He is the master upholsterman and we will meet him in a second. Got a fly bugging me. <laughs> Got him. Just kind of a look at the basic tools that I use here. Now these are just kind of spares over here, but I always want a knife sharpener. Uh, these these upholstery knives really come in handy for a lot of different uses. A lot of times I'll use these to notch legs and, you know, cut things and, uh, but they're a good knife. They're a good upholstery knife. Of course, you got your tack hammer, you got the mallet, you know, something you can beat that's soft on an end, a pair of dikes, any kind of, kind of a pointed edge. I made this out of a, of a good steel, um, Phillips head screwdriver. You don't have to buy any of these things. You just make one out of an old one. Blowers are always good to have around. And of course, the good old trusty air staple gun that gets a load of work done. Now my poster has a pretty good looking set of grandkids here too. Oh, looky here. He even catches big fish. <laughs> Got a pretty wife too. All right, on over here we got, I use this to sharpen my knives, my scissors, whatever. 
not the best system i'm sure any of you guys out there that sharpen tools are going to say oh my gosh but that's what i do yeah good old trusty button maker heat gun real important to have that's my five dollar grinder that i got at a garage sale just needs a new wire on it here we have the boss's office it is a mess i've got a daughter that has a pretty successful cleaning channel i think she needs to come and clean my office call me ash here's the sewing center that's an industrial machine it's an old one but it gets the job done I use that for mainly most of your normal heavy fabrics. Same with this one. Just that simple console with the just over here I got it one that we use kind of for double weld occasionally. Just kind of a backup. This one over here we use a lot for sewing ticks and other things. Well poured ironing area. The one thing you'll notice all throughout this shop is we have catch alls. And it catches all that stuff I don't want to throw away and have to spend money on again. Coming into the cutting table area, room enough on this table for two people. There's another one of those catch alls for old fabrics. But here's where we do the cutting. Down here is where we do the storing. We got bins up here for the stuff we haven't started cutting yet. All right, we're coming into the trimming slash spring area and I'm interrupting Billy from making a lot of noise real quick because we're gonna be notching legs so that welt can go around them here. But here we go through here. Another catch-all place over here. We use that also to block that door so nobody can get in. And then we got, we keep rubber webbings and different size springs here, the tacks, clips, webbings, spring twine, and a variety of tools used for this. You definitely want to be able to cut wire. This is an old one we don't use anymore for steel webbing. You know, stretcher webbing the stretchers. Got to have music. Here's an interesting tool. It's the old clinch it gun for when you put springs into webbing. And then this is jaws over here. And jaws is used to hook edge wire onto the springs. And those are the clinch its. What they look like that go in this here. Lots of glue. Now we'll go over to the cushion area. This is our table where we cut our foam, you know, to whatever size we need, crown it, wrap it with our Dacron, discard the excess over here that we think might be usable. A lot of times having a stack of this excess stuff comes in real handy when you need to add onto a piece or actually make a whole piece itself. So it gets the job done eventually. We'll look at it and say, mm, it's getting too big. And then we'll start picking it out, what we don't want. Now we're coming into the hard working area, the wood shop. We've got a very old, very sturdy, very durable, very powerful Delta table saw. And I've had this thing since I was started this business more than 30 years ago and all I've had to replace on this guy is a motor. And well worth it. Great, great, great sturdy. Cop chop saw. Big table to work with it. You can see I got a lot of clamps, a bunch of other junk. Got a dust system I never hooked up. I've got other, a bunch of different type of tools down here. A steel cutter, a little, little hand belt sander, you know, a little cutoff saw there, sawzall, um, biscuit joiner back there, router. I don't know where that motor came from. 
And of course, another catch-all of wood that I just can't make myself throw away, which I will eventually go through this and knock it in half. I got this bandsaw. And this is a shop fox. And I got this at a local hardware store, not, not your big box store. This is a tool store with Steve Wholesale, but I don't know that y'all have them in your town. But that has proven to be a good, very good bandsaw. And over here, I have my, what I consider a fairly cheap tabletop sander, six inch. I don't use that part, so it's not on there. And this has been a beast. I recommend this, uh, just that it's that cheap old central machine, machinery uh, one you can get at Harbor Freight, but it gets the job done. Don't get the little one if you plan on doing any big work. That little three inch one with the little four inch table, not quite as powerful or durable. It might get for light work, light work, but not for the work I do. Of course, here's my table. I've got, got the little air compressor on for out jobs when I need it. And then the rest of this center, you can tell I've got a bunch of scrap Dacron that I come and pick out of before on any job I do before I go over here and get the bigger pieces I need. I try to go through this first. Sometimes it gets whittled down, sometimes it doesn't, but we're not gonna throw it away if it's still usable because I can even get, just for even bands or any little outside parts or whatever, it comes in handy. Of course, I store my lumber here because storage in this building is very limited. So I've made it accessible so that I can get it over here to my table saw pretty easily and then over to my table and all that and also it comes right in the front door real easy so that's how i've set it up here all right that's been a tour of my shop i hope it was informational for you hope you learned something from it and just ever wondered and now you kind of know and again not all shops are the same you're not going to see them all set up the same but i'll guarantee you one thing if it's a full-fledged upholstery shop it's going to be dirty uh, or it's going to be kind of cluttery because you got a lot of paddings, you got a lot of furniture, you got a lot of stuff, and the people want to get a lot of work done and not a lot of cleaning gets done. So make sure you hit that subscribe button, hit that notification bell, and if you like these videos, hit that thumbs up. And I will bring you along on every job that I think is pretty cool to do. Uh, I don't want to get into doing a bunch of redundant stuff, which, you know, you know, so you don't see the same old, same old, same old every time I post. But feel free to give me comments, uh, ask me questions, and, and give me suggestions. Thanks for watching. Bye.